Hi, welcome to the screencast for the Topic 9 Practice Problems. Question number one asks, which statement is correct? And it talks about oxidation and reduction. And in statement A, it says oxidation involves loss of electrons. That's true. And a decrease in oxidation. That's not true. That would be an increase in oxidation state. B, it says it involves a gain of electrons. And it's wrong right there because we just said it's a loss of electrons. C, reduction involves a loss of electrons. No reduction is the gain. So then D hopefully is correct. It's our last chance. It involves gain of electrons, yes, and a reduction or a decrease in oxidation state. So D would be the correct choice here. Number two then says, what are the oxidation numbers of the elements in sulfuric acid, H2SO4? So if I look at, take a look at the three elements, Oxygen has priority. There's four of them at a minus two each for a total minus eight charge. Hydrogen, with two of them, has priority as a plus one. Has to add up to zero, so that means my one sulfur is going to have to be a plus six to make this work. So looking up above, the one that fits for all three would be A, plus one, plus six, and minus two. So looking at number three, the following information is given about the reactions. The first one, X is trying to bump off Y, but it doesn't happen. So that lets us know Y is more reactive than X. The second equation, Z is able to bump Y off. So Z is more reactive than Y. So when we put these two together, it means Z is more reactive than Y is more reactive than X. And the one that fits that would be A. So number four says, which equations represent reactions that occur at room temperature? So you really have to know the reactivity of your halogens. And if you look at the halogen family, fluorine's at the top, followed by chlorine, followed by bromine, followed by iodine. So this is their reactivity. So in number one, bromine um, has reacted. Chlorine is trying to take uh, electrons from it. So number one can occur. The second one, iodine, is trying to take electrons from bromine. That will not happen. And the third one, chlorine, is trying to take electrons from iodine. That will happen. So one and three can both happen, which would give us a correct answer of B. Number five wants to know which equation represents a redox reaction. So you have to assign oxidation numbers to all of these to find out if an oxidation and a reduction have both occurred. So look at my priority here. I'm going to end up with a plus 1 for potassium. Over here, it's still a plus 1 for potassium. Uh, it's a plus 1 for the hydrogen and a minus 2. So looking at this one, no oxidation reduction has occurred. So A is not a redox. Second one, I've got Mg at a plus 2, plus 1, minus 1. Here, it's still a plus 2, minus 1 zero and actually made the same mistake you make this is actually a zero over here so b that is a redox occurring c looks like c and d both look like they should be a redox because you've got some uh replacement going on but if you look copper is a plus two here plus one minus one it's still a plus two over here so since it didn't change oxidation number, this is a replacement reaction, but it's not considered a redox equation. And we have the same situation with D. We've got a plus two. We know carbonate has a minus two as a polyatomic ion. Um, we could break that down and look at what carbon and oxygen are. So it's minus two overall. Minus two for the oxygen makes this a plus four for the carbon. Plus one, minus one minus one plus two. This is a minus four for the oxygen, so carbon's still a plus four, plus one, minus two. So again, there was no change in oxidation number, so only B is considered a redox equation. Number six, you're told the following reactions are spontaneous. That just means that they'll occur. So when you look at it, CD and FE, FE has to be more reactive than CD. CD with uh, tin, that also happens, so CD is more reactive than tin. And tin is able to uh, react with lead, so tin is greater than PB. So in order, there's a reactivity series. So then question one, is tin able to take electrons from FE or 
uh, able to react and give electrons to Fe. No, that won't happen. 2 Cd more reactive than Pb. Yes, that is true. And 3 Fe more reactive than Pb. That's also true. So D would be our correct choice here. Number seven says the oxidation number of chromium is the same in all the following compounds except. So the first one, I've got uh, a minus six on my three oxygen, a plus three on my three hydrogen. So that means chromium's a plus three in A. I've got a total minus six on my oxygen here. So the two chromium are each plus three. SO4, we know has a minus two charge on it. Um, if you look SO4 up on the polyatomic ion chart, so three times that's a minus six, but I have two chromium, so they're each still a plus three. And then CrO3, I've got an overall minus six on the oxygen, so chromium's a plus six. So D is the one where chromium's oxidation number changes. Number eight said, what occurs during the operation of a voltaic cell based on the following reaction? So if I break this apart into half reactions, I have Ni becoming Ni2 plus, that means Ni is being um, oxidized or losing electrons. And that means the Ni ion is moving away from the electrode. Whereas the Pb2 plus is picking up the two electrons and becoming Pb. So it's being reduced or gaining electrons. And that means that the Pb2 plus is moving toward the electrode. So knowing that, if I look down my choices here, then B is the one. Electrons move from Ni to Pb, that's true, and Pb moves toward the solid Pb. So B is the best choice. Number nine wants to know, in which change does oxidation occur? So if I look at uh, my first one here, oxygen's a minus two, and then I've got four hydrogen for a total plus four charge. So that means my carbon here must be a minus two. On the other side, I've got minus two for the oxygen, and I've got six oxygen at a plus six. So now my carbon is a minus four. So that means my carbon was actually reduced on this one. CrO42 minus, I've got total minus eight charge, but I, the ion has a minus two, so that makes chromium a plus six. Cr2O7, I've got minus 14, subtracting the two, minus 12. So it's still a plus six here. So this has been neither oxidized nor reduced. SO4, two minus, that's a minus six overall, um, or a plus six that the sulfur needs to balance. The SO3, the minus two charge, that's a plus four. Again, the sulfur's being reduced. So NO2, hopefully this one's oxidized. I've got a minus one. That leaves my nitrogen as a plus one. NO3 with a minus one, that leaves my nitrogen as a plus five. And that is oxidized. So D would be the correct choice. Okay, number 10 says, what happens at the positive electrode in a voltaic cell in an electrolytic cell? So we need to take a look at what's happening at each end of this. So the voltaic cell, remember, occurs when you have um, two metals connected by a wire and a salt bridge. So you've got two separate half cells. So I have one uh, metal in here connected by a wire to another metal, and electrons are flowing one way. So if the electrons are flowing this direction, this is considered the anode. Any oxidation is the anode. And this is where oxidation is occurring. And in a voltaic cell, this is considered the negative electrode because electrons are piling up here. If you didn't have the wire connecting it, there'd be a stockpile of electrons here. Over at the cathode then is the reduction, and that would be considered um, the positive end. So then in an electrolytic cell, we have the opposite going on in that we have electrons being pushed from the negative end of your power source. And this time, um, rather than being in separate half cells, this is all in one device, but again, it's connected to a metal here and a metal here. And so electrons are being lost 
at the, uh, well, there's an anode, and oxidation has to be occurring there. So electrons are being lost at the anode. So now that's considered the positive end because electrons are still flowing this way, okay? But because this is the negative end is pushing them here, now they would stockpile because the power source is part of it. So your cathode is now considered the negative end where and reduction is taking place there. And I'm sorry, it's, yeah, considered the negative end. And the anode is now considered the positive end. Even though the electron flow is the same, this electron flow is being created by the battery that you have in place, whereas this one's being created by the oxidation and reduction. Um, whereas in the electrolytic cell, the battery is being used to force the oxidation and reduction. So which of these would be a correct statement? In the voltaic cell, it's going to be the positive end is going to be where reduction takes place. And in the um, electrolytic cell, it's going to be where oxidation takes place. So B would be my correct choice on this one. Number 11 wants to know what species are produced at the positive and negative electrodes during electrolysis. So if I look, it's of molten sodium chloride. So I have NaCl. Let me get off that wrinkle. I have NaCl, and it's becoming Na solid and Cl gas. So I really need a 2 here and a 2 here. So if I look at the half reactions, I have 2Na plus 1 becoming 2Na solid. So that means it's gaining two electrons over here, or it's being reduced. And the chlorine starts as Cl minus. I also have two of those. And it's becoming Cl gas. So it's losing or being oxidized. And so if you remember from the uh, previous page, we said reduction takes place at the negative end and oxidation takes place at the positive end. So at the positive electrode, our oxidation would be Cl minus. And let's say it's asking what's being produced though. So our products are Na and Cl2. So that means um, this can't be correct and this can't be correct because the products are just Na and Cl2. So make sure you read it carefully if they're asking, you know, what originates there or what's being produced. And since the Na is being reduced, that is going to be at the negative end. And that leaves the Cl2 at the positive end, which is the anode, being oxidized. So D is my best choice. And then 12 ties in with this fairly closely. So number 12, if we take a look at the question, it says, which processes occur during the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride? So I've rewritten the same equation, the same half reactions. It's the Na being reduced, the Cl being oxidized. And it wants to know which one's occurring. It says sodium chloride ions move through the electrolyte. That's true. I've tried to draw it here. I don't know if you could tell. This is my electrolyte. You'd have both sodium and chlorine ions in there, just be salt water. You've got your two metals in there as an electrode. Electrons move through the external circuit. That's true, too, because that's what your power source is there for, is to push electrons through the external circuit from positive to negative. And then oxidation takes place at the positive electrode or the anode. That's true. I mean, it's nice that they put anode in parentheses because we know that oxidation happens at any anode. So D, all three of these statements would be true.